Welcome everybody to Abstract Art. Today we're going to have a lot of fun being creative, using color, using texture, using different tools. Uh, we're going to sponge and stipple, we're going to texture, we're going to use some tape, we're going to drip, we're going to blend, and we're going to use a palette knife. We are going to have fun and hopefully make a nice painting for our homes. Abstract art, it means, it's basically, there's no real form to it. It's just like lines and, and color blocking and just having lots of fun and anything goes. This is my, I'm just gonna give you some, some suggestions. Um, I just use usually use four colors and I on this one I used four colors. I used this olive green. I used raw umber. I used Naples yellow. And I use let me see what this this one is uh, prism violet. And also white, but I basically used four real colors. Now we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to show you some of the tools I use. You know, you can find things at your home to make the textures. So, I, it, so you can kind of look in your kitchen, in your toolbox. Um, I have a little sponge that I use. I use this kind of fun palette knife. I have a little rake. It's a little miniature rake that I use for my houseplants. Um, I use a painter's brush that like, I think these are like a couple dollars at one of the, at the hardware stores. I'm using a bright brush you can use any brush though for what we're gonna do. And I use these little, very soft brushes to blend and to pull the color out. And sometimes I use toothbrushes, old toothbrushes. It's kind of fun. Um, the when we start our painting, when we first start, we're going to sponge and stipple. And you just need a little, like, a uh, sea sponge. That's all you need. Okay. Now let's get started with our abstract art. Okay. So if we, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna start doing to get color down, to do color blocking, I'm gonna sponge and stipple different shape, different places in in the uh on my canvas oh and this is canvas and you know we're using just a reminder acrylic paint you can use other paints you can use watercolor but i just have better luck with acrylics you can actually use pens or you can use like watercolor pencils you can do, use all kinds of things and you can experiment on your own but I thought for us, let's, you know, just let's keep it simple. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sponge in some color. Okay, so let's do that. Get some color blocking in. And it's a good thing when you're doing this kind of work to repeat your color someplace else. So let's, let's, let's repeat it like down here. Okay, I'm just simply blotted it on with this sea sponge. And I mixed the olive with white to keep it kind of um, pastel looking. Now, I'm gonna use my little painter's brush. And I think I'm gonna use white. You can use different colors, but I think I'm gonna use white. Now this green I'm using is a pretty 
It's pretty, fairly cool color. It's not a warm color. It's got a little yellow in it, so kind of, it, it, it could be warm, but I think it's mainly a cool. So here, I'm just getting in, can you see that? There, I'll move it over for you. So I'm just stippling in, picking up color, stippling it in. Very relaxing, no great skill. And I like the texture I'm getting, so I'm just gonna leave that. And then I'm gonna do it on the other side because I like to bring the eye around with color. It's important to move your eye around a painting. Whenever you make a painting, make sure that there's an in and an out way to get out of your painting. It's more comfortable for the viewer. If you wanna shock people, then you don't have to do that. So here we've got some nice texture coming in, okay? So I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm gonna put down some of the violet color. And again, I'm gonna use white. I'm not gonna use a lot of the dark because I don't wanna distract out of the dark purple because I don't want to distract from the other colors we're going to use. So here's my cool going next to my warm green. The screen's warm, as I said before, because it's got a lot of yellow in it. But I like this color. I like these colors next to each other. And we'll put some more violet down. Maybe over here. You see that? You see what I'm doing? Just stippling it. Just kind of digging my brush into this canvas. Okay. And then I think I might, the next color I'm gonna use is, is taupe. I'm gonna blend a taupe with my raw umber and white. I'm gonna to try to put it next to the the lime yellow because it looks it's it's more uh, pleasing to the eye when you do that. Okay. So we've got some color down. If you notice, I didn't base coat this canvas. You could, I, I just like the way the color starts, works with the canvas, works, works with the texture of the canvas. If you paint it, you won't get, you won't have so much texture. You know, if you base color it. Okay, looks like uh, the, that kind of a map of the United States now, <laughs> which you're not supposed to do. You know, what's abstract, you're not supposed to do that, but that's okay. Okay, now, Let's put down some yellow. And I think I want to put the yellow in between the, the, the greens and the purples. And I used uh, the same hue. I didn't use, uh, they're all about the same because I want to keep it uh, kind of calm. I don't want to put harsh colors in you can do one with just harsh colors. Uh, you can do that, but I, I chose not to. But you can do anything you want. If you have a, a room in your house that has some color in it, you can take the colors from the room and put them in your painting and it'll, it'll match your room. If you're into matching your furniture and your drapery, which is kind of fun. When they first started producing abstract art, the critics were upset because they thought they they just couldn't 
understand why people wouldn't paint realistically. But as the camera was developed, we didn't have to do that anymore. We didn't have to be realistic. We had cameras for that. Okay, so I got a lot of nice color down. Wonder where, how this is gonna go. And I think the next thing I'm gonna do, uh, let's see, I'm gonna fill in that area up there. We'll put some taupe up there. there the raw umber with the white. These are not traditional colors that they use in homes anymore. This is kind of a just fun. I just wanted to make it colorful. If you have a spot in your home that needs some color, this is the way to do it. People are decorating now with grays and uh, gray down color, but I decided we we're gonna have fun today. There, okay, that's good enough. Now, I think I'm going to put some shapes in. Let's see, where's my... I'm taking my palette knife and I'm gonna put some shapes in. Some weird shapes. Yeah, I think I'm going to make a path through mine. And I'm not, there's no rhyme or reason, just having fun. pulling color around. Let's see what I get when I do. I put down, I think I'm going to put down some color. I like to put the darks on top of these light, lighter colors. Just the contrast is kind of fun. Now, I'm going to make it look a little fuzzy. It gives it a lot of movement, doesn't it? splotches. Running through the painting. I'm going to take my little, and you can use, you can use a comb to do this. Now we're having some fun. Get some texture in. I gotta put some color in the, the little break. So this is pulling more color around. And you can add as much or as little. I don't, when I do my contemporary paintings, I'm sorry, abstract, I don't like to use a lot of texture. I don't use, like to make it too busy. Uh, I think it's hard on your eyes, like, if you look at a uh, like a Jackson Pollock uh, painting, they're pretty busy, and sometimes they give me headaches. <laughs> but he was a master 
of the abstract art. Okay. Let's see if we can. Uh, Texture in there. So I think that's kind of fun. I think you're getting the idea. It's just kind of like you're playing. It's, that's what you're doing. Now, this is my favorite part. The next thing that I'm gonna do. I call it dripping. Now, this doesn't look at all like the one I did, the first one. They'll never, you can never get the abstract art to look like each, there's, it's one of a kind. You, you can't, you cannot copy any abstract art. It's, you can, but it's, I would think it would be really hard. Okay, so what I, I'm doing is I'm taking my brush, my painter's brush, and I'm putting color on it, and I'm putting the deepest color that I'm using and then at the top, here, can you see that? I'm gonna put some color here. And then I'm gonna drip it with water. To make it give even more texture. And usually I do this at the top of the painting. You can't see the top of this painting, so. do it from the top, but you can't see it, but you'll see it coming down. This is the fun, this is so fun to do, I think. Because you don't know where it's gonna drip. It's... There. Looks kinda. Now I'm going to turn this and drip it another way. And you're not going to be, you're not going to see the top of this, but you'll see it coming down. I love doing this. And when you drip, see the drips now that I put it on the side, what I stood at a different angle. The drips start coming this coming down uh, lengthwise, which is kind of fun. Here we go. Let's see, let's go put more drips in. And you can see them coming down. Starting to look really interesting. And I'm doing some on the side. Usually that's, I usually do the drips at the end so they show up. And when you're done with your painting, you can decide what, which way you like it. If you like it uh, on its side or up and down, you can kind of decide that yourselves. I kind of look at mine at different angles and then decide which way I like it better. Or you can just change it around. You don't have to always keep it the same way. Okay, and I think I want to do a little more raking. Kind of to break up these lines. Up. There. Have that go up. See, so the eye, your eye is really moving around in this painting. Okay, and I think I might want to add a few more dark tones. So when you're in your head, 
what you're doing in your head is you're thinking about what you're doing. You're thinking about if it looks good to your eye when you're putting the color down. I think I'm gonna go right over this. Okay. And then let's take your sponge brush, if you have one, if you have a little sponge roller, if you have one, and kind of roll this, get some more looks. There. So the other one I did, I didn't spend as long on it. I try not to spend a lot of time on these. I try to think about them before I do them because the more you, if you, you have to know when to stop. And that's with all art. You've got to know when it's time to start so that you don't get mud and it doesn't, um, it doesn't, so it looks good to your eye. You got to know when to stop it. It could get muddy, it could get too fussy. Use my palette knife again. I can find it. Here it is. You could also, once your painting dries, you can go over it again if you see something that it needs. But I usually don't go over it again. I usually pretty much leave it. Okay. So if you have any questions, you can just message me. But I think you've got a beginning. This kind of looks like de Kooning's section here, the way he scrubs it. Yeah, see now I'm, now I'm playing too much. Sometimes if you play too much, it's not good. Put a little more color in here. Just kind of stippling it. I don't like that line. I'm looking at that line, so. See, now I'm playing too much. <laughs> Let's do one more of these. Okay. Okay, well, I think we're done. We could play with it a little more. Um, like I said, you could let it dry and, and add more colors into it, but I think that sometimes it's best just to leave it simple. Well, thanks for joining us today. And of course, please message me if you have any questions. And take care, bye.